Thank you guys for having me here. My name is Rebecca Love. I serve as the co-chair of the Commission for Nurse Reimbursement and also one of the founders. Um, and by training, I am a nurse. Most of my career I have spent around the world of building up nurses to have an equal voice at the table and leading the nurse innovation movement so that nurses, if they were given the opportunity to be given the chance to innovate around the problems that they would want to solve, that we could solve major problems in healthcare. But fundamentally, where my love and my interest is, is after spending years in business, what I started to realize is that as long as nurses remain cost to healthcare systems, as any good business person knows, you cut cost, you don't invest in cost. And the fight of my career is going to be tied to changing the reimbursement model around nursing alongside one of the most dedicated nonprofit group of volunteer nurses that I've ever met in the world that are now leading the Commission for Nurse Reimbursement. When was the Commission for Nurse Reimbursement established and why? So it was established in April 2023, and largely it came after years of conversations in which corridors in which we would talk about the history of nursing was founded, where we started to realize that nurses were rolled into room rates back in the 1930s with the development of national insurance. When hospitals were run by men and nurses in the 1920s could bill for their services. But what was happening is that that came at the time of the women's rights movement, when nursing became the largest economic vehicle for women's financial independence in the history of the world. But men started to get threatened by women's financial independence in nursing. So they looked to a model that would capture nursing reimbursement, but not actually give them a financial identity about how much value they were bringing into healthcare. Maids had been rolled into room rates and they rolled nursing into room rates, into the models for national insurance, hiding the value of nursing. And still to this day, a hundred years later, nurses are the only healthcare professional that cannot bill for their services. And why that conversation became poignant was that as much as we kept talking about the nursing crisis, the shortages, the reality was all we kept hearing at every single meeting is there is simply no more money to pay for nurses in this country. And that was when the Commission for Nurse Reimbursement decided to take action. A group of leading nurses came to me and said, Rebecca, we need you to lead this movement because the truth is our current nursing structures in place are not going to be able to navigate because they have too many other priorities. And we need one central commission to focus this as being the central of their initiative to actually drive meaningful change that we know will probably take much longer than we hope, but are going to be committed to doing. Going forward, how do you and the Commission plan to go about changing the way nurses are paid? So currently, we have come up with seven different models. These models actually are not based on brand new models, but are based on models for one, other healthcare professionals that currently have billing structures in the United States, as well as in the country of Belgium. That was the first country to actually unbundle nurses from the room rates and have found that based on doing so, not only is access to care better, but patient outcomes are better because they are now able to pay for the nursing workforce that maintains towards best interest of the patient as opposed to a cost structure. So the reality is, is that what we're doing is getting this information out with the economic models and then setting up meetings with organizations like the HELP Committee, which is run currently and overseen by Bernie Sanders, as well as meetings with state treasurer's offices and health and human services offices at state levels to educate them on the issue that nurses are costs. Because what we're surprised to hear is that actually the vast majority of our elected officials, the vast majority of those driving healthcare had no idea that there was no reimbursement mechanism for nursing in our healthcare system today. What is the impact of an inadequate nurse reimbursement system on the quality of patient care? Since there is no reimbursement for nursing, we know that directly that hospital staff nurses to the lowest cost denominator. What that means is that a hospital is paid equally if a nurse carries four patients or if they're carrying eight patients. So from a financial perspective, since you're not getting paid any more money to have any more nurses, hospitals that are dealing with financial challenges, which all of them are in difficult operating budgets, take that number and they're going to put more patients per nurse to meet their economic viability. It has nothing to do with outcomes for patients. Because if it did, we would actually be following the models that have long been researched and studied by the National Institutes of Health with many published articles that actually show that for every one additional patient a nurse carries, there is a 7% increase in mortality of patients within 30 days of admission. That is the one denominator that we know is certain. More patients 
per nurse lead to increased death in patients. And is the reason that we don't staff safely is because nurses are costs and hospitals simply say they cannot afford more nurses, even if it means better outcomes for patients. How does the commission plan to also address the high cost of quality health care? Health care is 18% of our GDP. It's the most costly in the world of any other developed nation with actually the worst outcomes. What we fundamentally believe is that by changing this model, we will actually dramatically drive down healthcare costs because we know that when there are more nurses and uh, taking care of patients, patients do better. There are decreased rates of readmissions. There are decreased rates of infection. There are decreased complications because you have nurses doing this. The model in Belgium specifically showed that when they went to this model, healthcare costs actually went down and patient outcomes actually went up. We believe that what's actually happening in healthcare is because nurses are rolled into room rates. So much of that budget is being reallocated to other initiatives as a point to as opposed to nursing care. That when we actually reallocate accordingly, the dollars will be funneled into the direct portion of care. And the primary example of this is actually if you look in North Carolina, at which point in a situation that arose where in Novant's healthcare systems, they had laid off 300 nurses at their healthcare system. Emergency room wait times went up to 19, 21 hours. Patients were dying in the emergency room. And the state's treasurer's office said, well, what is going on? We have given this healthcare system multi-millions of dollars over the last you know, three years. What are they doing cutting nursing staff? And they threatened to pull the state's Medicaid license from Novant. Within the course of a week, Met Novant somehow found hundreds of millions of dollars to reinvest back in nursing. Well, maybe not hundreds of millions, but millions of dollars to reinvest back in nursing, which triggered the treasurer's office to do an investigation into where has all of these billions of dollars that they had been giving these nonprofit healthcare systems over the course of the last decade if it wasn't funding nursing. And what they found was that executive pay in these nonprofit hospital systems had actually doubled in five years. And that where and whereas they had actually laid off nursing staff, most of these executives during the year of 2020 didn't even take pay cuts during the pandemic. And what they realized was that as long as nurses were rolled into room rates, all of the money that they thought they were giving these healthcare systems to support nurses was actually being reallocated to other projects or other individuals' compensation packages, not nursing. So fundamentally, the reality is there's plenty of money in healthcare today, but it's being not given to support the nursing workforce. And the only way to do that is to make sure that we're tracking back to the nurse and paying the nurses for their services so that those dollars that are in room rates cannot be allocated in other ways except for paying for nursing. How can we raise awareness about nurse reimbursement and advocate for change? Well, I think it's just time that we start making it very clear and to the business people that are out there, because as soon as they realize that there's no reimbursement model for nursing, they get why there is a fundamental nursing crisis in this country. And I think that there is strong consensus among, among consumers and the public based on the Gallup poll being nurses being the most trusted profession, that we want nurses. We need nurses. I can't imagine a future that we don't have nurses in our society. And that's what's at risk with the current models that exist. So please go to the commission for nursereimbursement.com join us and in every conversation that you are having with any elected official or healthcare decision maker please make them aware of the current status that exists in nursing around lack of a reimbursement model and when they say hey well we have value-based care won't that help nursing actually that model tracks back to what's referred to as national provider identifiers npi numbers and nursing even in value-based care, is the only profession that was not assigned an NPI number. So even value-based care is going to track back that the room healed the patient, not the nurse. So right now, we are invisible. And the truth is, is we have to make nursing visible, valued, and reimbursable. And that is the direction of the conversation that we're going to have. What are the potential long-term consequences if nurse reimbursement is not adequately addressed? If nurse reimbursement is not adequately addressed, nursing in this country is going to fail as a profession. Without a business model around it, 
Not only will we see the significant multitudes of what we've seen, 57% of new grads already have left the bedside within two years of practice prior to the pandemic, even though we graduate 185,000 nursing students a year, the largest demographic of any degree program graduated in the United States. More nurses today now than ever before in history by 5 million nurses in the United States, which means we don't have a shortage of nurses in this country. We have a shortage of nurses willing to work in healthcare environments as, as they exist today because there is no investment. What I'm concerned about is that no future American, woman or man, is going to choose nursing, and we're going to see that happen. I wonder to myself, what happens to the fabric of our society if we don't have nurses? Who is going to be the first to run in when there's a car accident and stabilize that patient? Who is going to be the next people to cross that threshold in a pandemic when everybody else stayed home? and they cross the threshold with no treatment, no PPE, and at the beginning of that pandemic being furloughed and told they were expendable. It has always been nurses who have showed up in the worst of environments to do what most in society won't. So I would say we should be doing everything, investing every single dollar we can into that workforce. And that is what I fear if we don't change the reimbursement model that nursing is seeing a sunsetting of a profession that will no longer be valued or chosen by that next generation. And what that means for our society in general is a defabrication of those who have empathy and compassion for those in society who would no one else would care for except nurses. And we must not let that happen. Finally, what can you tell us about what you hope to accomplish in the near future? I'm going to put all my efforts to building the Commission for Nurse Reimbursement and also relaunching an organization that I had started and allowed to go dormant because I feel that it further advances the direction of nursing and making sure nurses have a seat at the table. And what I would say to anybody listening here and looking at the future of nursing is as nurses, if you are feeling burnt out, if you are feeling hopeless and lost and unheard and unseen, know that the only person who can change that is you. Bet on yourself because this generation, we need strong nurses to lead us forward.